Ashoka the Great was responsible for one of the most violent massacres in history. However, after his encounter with Buddhism, he went from being an evil ruler to a saint. Welcome to History Duck. Today, I'm going to tell you the story of Ashoka, the pacifist emperor who went through a completely mind-blowing transformation. So, let's get started. The Fall of Macedonia The death of Alexander the Great threw the world into chaos, causing rulers to fight over every conquered and abandoned territory, including the cities of India that had surrendered to Macedonian power. Yet the Maurya dynasty, led by one of Ashoka's predecessors, managed to prevail and reunify the territory in a time of intrigue and turmoil. Ashoka was the third emperor of the Maurya, a dynasty that, between the 4th and 2nd centuries BC, dominated almost the entirety of India, Pakistan, and part of Afghanistan. Thanks to his skill and military might, Ashoka managed to expand the dominion of his empire from the capital of his kingdom, Pataliputra, to unify the entire territory of India. According to legend, Ashoka was the son of King Bindusura and one of his wives, Supadranji, who was the daughter of Brahmin. After Supadranji was removed from the king's bed due to palace intrigue, Supadranji finally managed to reconcile with her husband and give him a son. This is why his mother named her son Ashoka, which means he who has no sorrow, since his birth had ended his mother's anxieties. Chanda Ashoka Prince Ashoka had the confidence of his father, who had entrusted him with the government of the provinces of Ujjain and Gandhara. After his father died in 273 BC, Ashoka assumed power, but not before demonstrating how cruel and pragmatic he could be as a ruler. He ordered all his brothers killed and his supporters tortured to crush all possible opposition and rule Maurya with an iron fist. The prince's actions triggered four years of bloody civil war, finally ending with Ashoka settling on the throne of Padalaputra and ushering in a cruel and violent reign. The first years of his reign earned him the name Chandra Ashoka, which means Ashoka the Cruel. On one occasion, the women of his harem despised him for his ugliness, and he ordered 500 of them to be burned. In the words of the Chinese Buddhist Fa Shang, Ashoka had built an earthly hell within his walled garden, where he lured curious onlookers to torture them in horrible ways. Until one day, a Buddhist monk who managed to endure the tortures ended up gaining the emperor's respect, thus making him his religion. Although we cannot confirm how true these stories are, there is no doubt that Ashoka was a ruthless and bloodthirsty emperor before his worldview changed. The most common account of Ashoka's conversion to Buddhism is the conquering practice of the Maurya. After his father, Bindusara, consolidated the empire as the most powerful and extensive in Asia, there was only one prosperous kingdom left that resisted conquest. The kingdom was known as Kalinga, located on the east coast of the Indian subcontinent, where the state of Orissa is today. Eight years after assuming the throne, Ashoka undertook a military campaign to annex this territory and bring the Maurya dynasty to its maximum splendor to surpass the feats of his predecessors. However, there was one issue that the emperor had not considered the number of human lives would end up being wasted in his eagerness to continue expanding the borders of his empire. According to the king's estimates, the war with Kalinga caused the death of 100,000 people through combat, or the multiple battle wounds that caused soldiers to agonize for days before the last breath of life escaped their bodies. 150,000 people were also deported from their homes, whose only sin was being born on the losing side. After the war ended, Ashoka stepped on the battlefield and was horrified by what he had caused. He saw endless mountains of piles of corpses, mutilated bodies, and horrified faces. At that moment, Ashoka understood what war meant and how his eagerness to conquer a kingdom had caused the death and suffering of his friends and enemies. 
This would serve to take one of the most dramatic and transformative turns ever seen in the life of a ruler. His Conversion to Buddhism Kalinga's experience gave birth to a new Ashoka, a ruler who wished to purify his soul because of the desolation he had caused. In one of his edicts engraved on stone, he expressed that, The beloved of the gods felt remorse for the conquest of Kalinga, for it is when a country is conquered for the first time that the killings, death, and deportation of people result very sad for the beloved of the gods and weigh heavy on his soul showing how remorseful he felt for his actions. For the next year and a half, Ashoka invited sages from all over the continent to join him in intense philosophical discussions. Through these debates, he could find some of the peace he needed that his life as a warrior had denied him. This caused the young emperor to begin a more introspective stage, leading him to become a convinced pacifist and Buddhist. After the tenth year of his reign, Ashoka decided to go on a pilgrimage. He spent 265 days traveling on foot with his retinue along the banks of the Ganges until he reached Sarnath, a suburb on the outskirts of Varanasi, where Buddha gave his first sermon. There he went to the town of Bodhgaya, where the Bodhi tree stood, under which Prince Siddhartha Gautama became the enlightened Buddha. The sight of the tree brought Ashoka the serenity he had been seeking and led him to erect a temple in that sacred place. From then on, he began to be called Dharma Ashoka, also known as Ashoka the Pious. Ashoka the Pious as the emperor's faith grew, so did his reputation as a saint and pacifist. Following the concepts of Dharma, he formulated edicts for his people that promulgated social and moral conduct that tended to the pursuit of the common good and happiness. He became the first ruler in history to renounce conquest and violence. Instead, he founded hundreds of monasteries and hospitals, planted trees to provide shade for his subjects, and had wells drilled to quench their thirst. He also replaced the significance of the sound of drums, which announced the march of soldiers to the battlefield, with what he called the music of the Dharma, the announcement of impressive theatrical spectacle in which the new religion was taught with fireworks, symbols of purity, and white elephants. His new respect for all forms of life led him to prohibit the hunting and slaughtering of animals for any of his palace banquets. He also engraved the details of conversion and the doctrines of the Dharma on the pillars of the busiest squares of the empire, and did the same thing on the mountain passes traveled by his subjects so that every person could benefit from the greatness of Buddhism. On one occasion, he wrote, All men are my children, as I desire for my children that they should all enjoy bliss and happiness in this world and next, the same I also desire for all my men. Despite his laments, he never renounced the conquered kingdom of Kalinga, nor used moderate force against the rebellious peoples of the frontier. However, his message was truly revolutionary for his time, as he treated all his subjects equally, unlike the doctrines of Brahmanism in which caste membership defined social position. But while the emperor was preoccupied with creating a peaceful kingdom, his enemies were preparing to seize its wealth. The Fall of the Maurya Empire If there is one thing we must give Ashoka credit for, his ideas were noble, kind, and optimistic. If we consider his reign since his conversion to Buddhism, Ashoka could have been one of the best emperors in history, if not because he lived in a cruel and violent world in which piety was seen as weakness. That is why, after his death, the Maurya Empire soon disintegrated. According to the Ashoka Vadana, the emperor fell seriously ill during his last days of reign. During that time, he made large donations to the Buddhist Sangha that led his ministers to deny him access to the royal treasury. That is why he donated all his personal possessions, which he was also prevented from doing. On his deathbed, he only possessed half of a Mirabalan fruit he donated to the Sangha. Ashoka was not a perfect emperor. His pacifist behavior became the cause of the end of his empire. 
However, he will always be remembered as one of the most benevolent rulers in history, a man who managed to reign in a violent world through peace and tolerance. That's all for now. See you in the next video with another interesting topic.